Hi, I'm George Hussey, Dr. 914 from Automobile Atlanta, and today I'm going to do a walk around of a 914-6 GT clone. The rage these days is to put big 911 engines in 914s and weld on steel flares and put wider wheels and tires and big brakes to replicate the original racing 914-6 GTs. We would never advocate cutting an original 914-6 because the 914.6s are way too valuable just the way they are. 914.6s never had flares and they had two liter engines in them and they had five and a half inch or six inch wheels and in stock dress are worth the most. However, this car being a genuine 914.6 happened to have been damaged years ago in the front end. So it was a perfect candidate to weld flares on and make into the hot rod you see today. These days with factory 914.6s hovering in the 100,000 to 100,000, to $75,000 range, restoration is not out of the question. And although it takes hundreds of hours to restore a car properly, the 914.6 is well worth it because you get an exciting, fun, valuable car when you're finished. As you can see, Here's the blank body shell. You can imagine what this customer is spending to restore this. We've been doing welding on this for the last three months and the body will be quite perfect before we put it on our rotisserie, paint it, and then reassemble the whole thing. Notice the stock fenders. This car will be restored to factory perfection and the gentleman will enter it in several concourse competitions and keep it in his collection. And if you want to know more about this particular 914.6, you can see our YouTube video, Body in Blank. So just to give you an idea, this car was restored in 2006 from a beat up 914.6 that ran and drove into the shop. But by the time the flares were welded on and the car was painted in base coat, clear coat, glazerate paint, the wide wheels and tires were put on and the engine was rebuilt. The man spent well in excess of $80,000, and that doesn't include the initial purchase price of the car. So you can imagine restoration costs, and very few people can do it themselves. But again, like I said, you end up with an exciting car. So let's go over this car so you can get an idea of what has happened to this car and what has been modified. So this car was originally light ivory. We would never advocate changing color on any 914. And when they welded on the steel factory duplicate flares, they also eliminated the side marker because the side marker intrudes into the flare a little bit. What Porsche did when they sent the 916 and the GTs, street GTs to the United States, they actually had to relocate the side marker lower, which really made it even uglier than it already is. So by eliminating this, it gave a very, very smooth, nice appearance. The steel fender flare is mated to the front GT Valence, which was always fiberglass, and what is available in the aftermarket has the cutout for the oil cooler. This car still has its original but rebuilt two liter six cylinder engine in it, so it does not need a front oil cooler. Cars up to 2.4 inside a 914 don't need an oil cooler. When you get up to 2.7 and larger, you have to put a front oil cooler in. But the body man who did this did a very, very nice job because everything fits beautifully. He did a lot of nice fitting before he painted the car. And that's critical. If you don't fit all the panels before you paint it, you end up with a mess like you can see in one of our other videos about the bent 914. So I look at the body lines on this and they're all very, very nice and uniform. You can see some of the age from 2006 because this car has been used. There are a couple little chips here and there. But the body lines, like I said, are really, really great and everything is in its correct position. And I can see that new chrome was put on and new trim and new rubber. They spent a lot of money, like I said. But one thing I can see, which is not so good, is that the paint has had a reaction and it's got some pimpling. It looks like this car, to begin with, would need to be sanded and buffed because the resins in the primer have come through. So although it looks great, really, really great, if I just look at it like this, it's flawless, but then I get up close, look sideways, and I can see some of the little pimpling. 
And we don't know whether that can be sanded out or not. Again, I know it's resins that have come up from the primer. And uh, if not, the top surfaces will certainly have to be repainted. But still, the car looks great. And I'm sure it runs great. And it's the kind of car that you can drive and not worry about getting a nick in and have a tremendous performer that still looks good that you can take to a local car show and people will ooh and ah. The fiberglass flared rocker panels are exact duplicates of the original factory ones. And because they're fiberglass parts, they never really fit well. A good body man has to take extra pains to get the lines correct on these. And then they have to have a modely finish just like the factory. There were never any such thing as steel flared rocker panels. Even the 916 has fiberglass rocker panels on it. So by looking at these lines, again, I know somebody has taken great care to make sure everything lines up. And then I can come up here and I can look at the body line and it's all really perfect. And I look at the door glass fit, that's nice. Knowing again, somebody has taken great pains to make sure that everything fits and pre-fit everything before painting. The rear trunk line is nice. The flares are centered correctly. Just a, uh, just a good job from years ago. So around the back I'm looking and I see some of the pimpling here in the paint as well. And again, it looks like maybe with a good sanding and buffing it could come out, but it's a bit troublesome, but doesn't affect the overall look of the car. And then I look at the fit of the rear trunk, and it's nice and clean back here. The original bumper, which is 70 only, which goes straight down rather than curving to what we call a smile. Somebody mounted a license plate bracket in the wrong place years ago. It's got some touches of originality, like the faded chrome on the rear trunk and the tailpipe that probably needs a nice steel wool, and the wrong bumper plug. But yet it has original Hella Euro lenses, which are sort of nice rather than the repros they make today. And in general, it has a combination of new and used, which makes it, uh, what do we say, it has that certain patina about it. The rear roll bar chrome, a little bit pecked, but these can be replaced for only $200 each, which is crazy. And then we come to the engine grill. The engine grill is what we call made of German chicken wire engine grill. The GTs had it on them and so did the 916s. It's supposed to provide extra engine cooling. But frankly, when we did tests at the racing track, it wasn't any cooler with or without this GT engine grill, but it looks cool and the chicken wire never matched the original grill, so they did it, they did it correctly to put this flimsy looking uh, German chicken wire GT engine grill on here. And like the 916, they blacked out up underneath the sail roll bar, which gives it a nice custom look. Just a passing note, you may not be able to see it, but if you don't use super weather strip adhesive on both sides of the sail vinyl, after a while it stop sticking and I can see on this one that it is that way and it it's hard to see unless you get up close and it's easy to re-glue it but it just gives a little like a wrinkled uh, bed cover look which needs to be fixed actually. One final thing about the exterior is this has had a windshield put in it and it's a new one and we don't know how many windshields it has had put in it because as I'm going to show you later, it's been damaged in the past, but they ripped off the beginning of the serial number plate. I know that this is a factory serial number plate, but the 914 is gone. Somebody has used wire to pull out the old windshield and they just cut right through the serial number plate, which is typical. We see that many, many times. This car's had a comprehensive paint job, as I can see, because it's beautifully shiny up underneath the trunks, and the original number on the wheel well has been clear-coated, and the paint, as far back as you can see, even in the crevices, is really, really nice. Knowing this is a 76-cylinder, 
and knowing that the front panels are different, the first thing that I can see that gives it away that the fact the car has been damaged is the fact that it's got the reinforcements from the 7374 model on the front panel. So this front panel reinforcement, which is a good thing, Porsche put that in there to reinforce, like I said, the front end, tells me right away that this has had a 74, 73 front end put on it, but yet there's no other damage here. So where is the damage and how is it repaired? Well, I look back here and I see it's all clean here. One thing I noticed that is that the serial number plate is missing. So I know that probably when this car was wrecked, it crunched the serial number plate and some body man threw away the front portion of it along with the plate, but they're readily available in the aftermarket and can be engraved with the correct number. So I look back here and this all looks perfect. We have all the factory seams, the front bulkhead, but then I get back further and here is the telltale sign. This is not factory. This is a repaired area that has been re-welded and they did a good job on it, but this is where the cut was made. So we know from here where my hand is forward was from another car and it went, and it's a good place to cut it, it went up underneath the gas tank all the way across to right over here. And you can see the line here is not quite right where it goes down and then it's cut. But they did a good job and the lines are correct and because this is a hot rod, it's not that important that the car, I mean we'd like it to be, but it's not that important that the car has never been damaged. Because again, it's a hot rod, a lot of welding's been done on this car, and it's just a fun car to drive. One passing note before I close the lid, this has a four-cylinder washer bottle in it. Trying to find a six-cylinder washer bottle these days is a $600 adventure. So that's sort of uh, disappointing, but who uses the washers in a 914 anyway? 90% of accidents occur to the front end of vehicles, so I don't anticipate with the good lines on this car anything bad happening in the rear so i'm going to look there and when i lift these trunks i don't let them go because we could strain the hinges i help them up there are two torsion rods here under extreme pressure and if you let the deck lid fly up it could rip the trunk hinge pivots off the inner fender well again this car has had comprehensive paint work in light ivory the correct color so the trunk lid looks really really great notice they didn't paint the rear trunk hinge bolts you can tell immediately if it's in its original factory form if these trunk hinge bolts are painted. The front ones are not, the rear ones always are. Like That's a stupid little 914 fact. A lot of new parts here. The top holders, the top hinge cups, the shock top covers. It's got the original jack here. And I can look at this rear panel and I can see that it is straight and the rear catch is very, very straight. And although it has been recalked, it was done in a very nice way. I can see that the muffler shield was taken off and bolted back in. The 914.6 muffler shields were always bolted on and the four cylinders were always welded on. So you can see the, the heat shield bolts. Volkswagen back then had two different heat shields, one for the four, one for the six. Since the vast majority of cars were four cylinders, they would automatically weld in the muffler shields. Well, the six muffler was a different configuration. So they would send these cars to Porsche who would add the new muffler shield that would accommodate the six cylinder muffler and they bolted it on. These are not quite the correct screws, but good enough and in the correct place. The spare tire relocation plug is missing, which is no big thing but generally nice, straight, rust-free, and presentable, along with the factory toolkit, which usually they're missing their screwdrivers, we'll see. Well, it's got, it's got one of them. Luckily, the screwdrivers are now made by Porsche, and you, so you can complete your toolkit. But it's there, and it's clean, and it's better than no toolkit at all. Nice little touch and a work glove which we'll put back in there. Aftermarket piece of carpeting, nice enough, good job. It's not complete with the rear insulator pad, which is available in the aftermarket. Notice the trunk mounting bracket for the jack. This was where the jack was mounted until 
production 172 when it was relocated to the front. So whenever you see a jack back here, you know the car was made starting in 69 and ending in 12, uh, 71. It's always critical to hold your hand over the engine lid when you open the car because this will fly up and hit the rear top and the rear chrome because it's under pressure from the torsion rods. However, this light, light German chicken wire engine lid with the original torsion bars that are supposed to pop up the nice heavier steel will really fly. So I am going to have to hold this one. And what I'm going to do is just for a demo, I'm going to show you. I'm going to put my hand here. I hope it doesn't catch me badly. Watch. Notice. That's why you always need to hold this engine lid. We know this is a numbers matching engine and built by one of the premier rebuilders in the United States of Porsche 911 engines. And you can see these water shield air cleaners. I think Richard at PMO makes these instead of the factory air cleaner, which will gulp more air for more power and keep the water out of the carbs, we hope. And I can see over there that there is a late model engine relay board cover, which is okay, no big thing. Little um, spray in the engine compartment, probably should have cleaned the engine compartment out when they rebuilt the engine. Evidently, there are only 1,300 miles on this rebuilt engine. And the battery tray, which is coated and clean, the control unit, for the ignition here. The engine compartment, in my opinion, could use a little bit of cleanup to make it commensurate with the rest of the car, but not too bad and certainly, certainly not rusted. The six cylinder is unique for its dry sump and oil holding tank, which is over here. You can see the oil cap. The oil tank is in the fender well. All 914s were stamped in this left inner fender well for the cutouts to mount the oil tank and the studs and down here the oil filter. And this one has all of its correct boots and correct hosing so it looks good. The early cars also had a ground on the voltage regulator. This is not the correct wire but it's close enough and grounded. So everything looks good here. There's not the correct engine shelf plug. The four cylinders had drain plugs because they had a drip pan here. The six cylinders didn't, so they plugged the shelf with a piece of plastic. This has a nice steel plug, which isn't correct, but no big thing. So with this engine compartment, if I had my way, I would, and it was my car, I'd take the engine out and I'd clean the complete compartment and I'd polish a little bit. I would touch up the black around the battery tray, paint it nice and white, and then put the engine back in and have something that would be good to show. And closing this, because it's under such pressure, as you can see, that it really, you don't want to slam it, you want to just clip it like that. And then I always hit the rear window to see if it's loose, and this one's nice and tight. The interior has a combination of patina and redone parts, which I like for the fact that it makes me think that the car hasn't been through the mill so badly. We know it's had front damage, but really not completely through the mill, like I said. For example, the lower dash pad, this is obviously the original one, has a couple cracks in it. The slider switch assembly certainly needs to be repainted. I can see that because this is the original ashtray, it's had a brand new dash pad put in it, but yet the original instruments are in with a 6200 RPM range red line and the factory speedometer showing 37,000, probably 137,000 of course, and then the factory six temperature gauge, which is unique for the car. The headlight bezel and the driving light bezel have been replaced. That is new and not actually correct. This is from a later model car because it's amber and not green, but so what, those are tiny little details. The interior mirror is a late model mirror which is larger, which is a good thing. The original one being shorter. The visors are original. Six cylinders never had a mirror on the right side. And a very nice thing is this GT steering wheel. This is a fun item. The GTs had this. I'm going to shake it to turn the key on. The GTs had this wheel with a central horn button. This is a $1,000 addition. 
to say the least. I think now this is 600 and this thing is five or 600 itself. But yet the factory six steering column and wipers and everything in its proper place. It's missing the framing around the steering column. Those are available in the aftermarket. I don't know why somebody took that out. I don't like these aftermarket shift knobs. They're cheap looking, but the original five speed pattern that goes on here easily. The hand throttle is in its correct place. The heater lever. The carpets are of the right material, but I can tell obviously they're aftermarket. The clutch, as is typical, needs to be adjusted. This is a cable clutch and I see so many of these when photographed with the clutch pedal down. The clutch pedal needs to be up all the way and then you should be able to shake it about that much for the free play and then you know it's in proper adjustment. So this car needs to be put on the lift and the clutch adjusted or we could worry about grinding the gears. The back pad, I can tell the 70 only has a very, very grainy back pad. So I can tell that this is the original back pad in here, but yet this is a late model center seat cushion because it's a lot finer in grain along with the bolsters on the side of the seat. So it has had some interior work done to it, which is at least tasteful and it is in the tradition of the original. It's not some kind of aftermarket stuff that doesn't match at all. Uh, the emergency brake is the late model one piece. This originally had a two piece emergency brake in it, which would fall and hide away. Well, nobody knew how to turn it off because it was quite an operation. You had to turn it off with the heel of your hand and let the whole thing down and people drove these cars and wore the brakes out. So in 73 they changed it and the update is to put the one piece on it, which is perfectly fine. For the owner's personal taste, I guess they like the black anodized stripping here. This originally had silver anodized, which gives a highlight to the interior. I like the silver in the earlier cars better myself, but this is again new and has been carefully installed with the correct plastic rivets. I'm looking here at the Carmen plate, which I can tell by the rivets has been put in here. It's not the original plate and it actually is not engraved. At least I can't see that it's engraved. And two holes for where it originally had speakers in the doors. The speakers in the doors were the best place to get the best sound and early on many, many, many people put speakers in the doors. But now we want to be more traditional, suffer the weak speaker location from the factory and take the speakers out of the doors. So the holes are still here but there are no speakers in there. This is one giveaway that the car is totally original in the respect that it's not been heavily welded on in the back. It has the original DOT sticker that was placed on all of the USA bound cars. The six cylinder said Porsche AG and was silver and you can see the serial number. Plus if you look through the little dots you can see that there's light ivory up under there. We have seen many people color change these, tape off the sticker as this one has been taped off. So amateurs look and they think oh this is the original color but yet they look through the sticker and there's a different color in the little dots. You can tell by looking at this again that this is the original sticker. So this area has never been affected. Um, as a side note, notice there's no little round grill in here. They never had those until late 72. So it is correct not to have anything in this hole. This is the flow through ventilation that would let the air out as it came into the cockpit. That's why these are so necessary, these holes and they're wide open. Two final things I want to talk about with the interior here is the fact that this door panel, and it's a little wrinkly, has been recovered with Naga hide from 71 only, as opposed to the, we call this pebble grain, it's not really pebble, but the rough grain vinyl of 70 only. So you can see the, the difference between this and between that. And another thing is this window crank. The early cars up to the middle of 73 always had a chrome base which is a little bit more jewel-like to have rather than this 70, late 73 through 74 window crank. And the window crank, when the window is rolled up all the way, it should be at the eight o'clock position. So always remember that when you're preparing your car. One nice thing this car has, although it's not so utilitarian, is the set of original non-adjustable seat belts. This is quite the concourse detail to have perfect, original 
non-retractable seat belts. These things always went bad. They got dirty. They would crumble. They didn't have any of the stickers on them anymore. But these are quite original and quite nice. Totally a hassle to adjust and use. We um, know now that in the aftermarket there are retractables available for these early cars. But to have the originals in here is just a nice little, I don't know, concourse touch. I think if I was going to have this car for myself, though, I'd keep these and I'd put the retractables in it because, again, this is a sporting hot rod, not some concourse showpiece. So in conclusion, after my interior and exterior inspection, I'd say this is a very, very nice 914.6 genuine hot rod that you could have years of enjoyment with. And with a good thorough cleanup, have a car that is worthy of a couple of local auto shows for sure. Thanks for listening. This is George Hussey, Dr. 914 from Automobile Atlanta.